Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I'm going to be talking about Norwegian knitting, um, which is in very similar to Shetland knitting. Um, and by Norwegian knitting, um, I do specifically mean like the Selbu tradition. Um, so two color knitting, um, similar to Fair Isle knitting, usually using fewer colors, um, but two colors per round and um, intricate, um, intricate patterns, um, sometimes larger rather than like the smaller bands and motifs. Norwegian knitting is more known for all over stuff and mittens and socks. So I'm gonna talk mostly today about books um, and wool, but um, yeah, let's just get into it. So I, this is my favorite Norwegian knitting book, Selbu Mittens. This was published in English in 2019. Um, it's by Anne Borsgaard. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. There's sticky notes in it because I use it all the time. I love to make mittens. And my first like introduction to color work knitting back in like 2017 was all about mittens. I made a ton of mittens from Folk Mittens, which is a great book um, if you've never heard of it. Uh, we, my mom liked my copy so much that she bought one for herself. I was like, look, I can lend you this. And she's like, no, no, it's so good. I need one of my own. Um, my mom also really likes to make mittens. And um, my best knitting friend, Monica, maybe she's watching this. I think she watches my <laughs> show. I hope so. She's on her honeymoon right now, though, in Italy. So maybe not. I just went to her wedding last weekend. It was really fun. Um, Monica and I got really into Selbu knitting when we were both uh, graduate students in Philadelphia. And um, not Selbu knitting specifically, uh, mittens, color work mittens. Um, and we knit mittens for each other and for lots of people we knew. And we swapped yarns and we made the same pattern. We did like knit alongs and it was like the best. And <laughs> when I was at the wedding last weekend, um, she was wearing a hand knit sweater on the, at the rehearsal dinner and I was wearing one and her mother-in-law was wearing like a shawl and some guy was like, it's like a competition between you guys all right. And I was like, I would never think that with Monica, like, oh my gosh, she's a beautiful knitter and her stuff is so gorgeous. And we just like, we always get each other yarn and stuff. I got her this book for her birthday last year, but it turned out she already had it. So she gave it to her mom, which was the best possible thing to do because her mom is awesome. Um, anyway, so we made a bunch of them um, in like beautiful, like fingering weight singles yarn because that color or that yarn takes dye super well and you can buy beautiful yarns. And mittens are a great choice for fingering weight singles because um, they're soft for your hands. And because you're knitting at such a tight gauge, they do get pilly, like you can shave them. Um, but they don't really like, you know, disintegrate. Like they don't stretch out of shape like a color work sweater would if you made, or uh, color work, you might not have color work. Um, any sweater with fingering weight singles, like it tends to, they t it tends to stretch. But if it's at a really tight gauge, especially with color work, it's okay because um, color work prevents knitting from stretching so much because of the floats. So I'm gonna show a couple of mittens that I have been working on. Um, and a bunch of books. So this book, again, amazing. Almost everything's in black and white. There are 500 charts in this book and there's pictures. So like there's pictures of and examples of all of the mittens and gloves. Um, they give you kind of a, like a template, but you know, I, I tend to, to create my own based on patterns that uh, are tried and true for me. So there's lots of beautiful free patterns on the internet on Ravelry. And I will link some in the show notes. And I almost always base my own designs using this book. Um, my just personal for me and my friends. Um, I base them on just kind of base patterns that fit really well. So this is one that I made recently. It doesn't have a thumb yet, um, but this is just with the kind of a blue gray yarn. I dyed it. It's a Peruvian Highland wool, like worsted. So it's really, um, it's, it's, it's very hardy. It's not super soft, but it's not scratchy. It's, it's just really good quality wool. It's non super wash. Um, and I also took Patricia Fortune's advanced Selbu mitten class. Um, I didn't take the beginner one, full disclosure. 
Um, you could take the beginner one totally um, if you are kind of, you know, newer, but I knit a lot of mittens and so I jumped into the advanced class and I was totally fine. Um, and so she teaches skills like lining up the um, middle of the cuff pattern with the middle of this pattern and that is brilliant. Um, and this would be a traditional men's selbu mitten because in a women's selbu mitten there would be a lace cuff and I will show you a lace cuff in a second because I have another example. Um, and this wouldn't really, there's a lot of things in this mitten that like break the traditional rules of the who's fleeting, which is the selbu mittens like guild. However, I like I did an afterthought thumb or a forethought thumb instead of putting it on waist yarn. But that was just by accident. Usually I do put them on waist yarn and cast on new stitches now because um, it does work better. Uh, but anyway, and like this is like worsted weight yarn. So, but I like to make mittens with worsted weight yarn. They knit up really fast um, and they make great gifts. So yeah, this isn't even blocked yet. And the like Peruvian Highland wool, there's Hobbs. Oh, he went off after something. Hobbs is, um, he's outside. Hobbs is my parents' Cairn Terrier. Um, so he looks like Toto, but he's blonde. And he's, he's pretty big, Karen. He's like 20 pounds. He's very energetic. He's four. There he goes. Oh, the squirrel just went up a tree. He's really angry. He might start barking. If he barks a lot, I have to bring him inside because terriers like to bark. Um, my mom calls him a terriorist. <laughs> he's, he's really fun. We like him because he's not super affectionate. Um, like he doesn't need attention all the time, but he's very, um, especially if he's tired, like early in the morning or at night, cause he's a little dog, he gets tired pretty early. Um, he loves to be scratched and he's very soft. So that's like a fingering weight or a worsted weight version. This is a more traditional fingering weight version of a selbu mitten knit in Rama Gemelzeri yarn. Um, with a with a women's cuff again this isn't blocked so it's not really lying flat but this is a lace cuff um using like the right number of stitches for a women's mitten based on the who's fleeting standards um and this can go on my hand because there's a thumb hole so in traditional selbu mittens you would have a thumb hole um this pattern came out of the a book um that i actually don't have with me um, I don't even know if it's in my house. It's like the history of Selbu mittens knitting. I will link it in the show notes. I think I got it from Schoolhouse Press. Um, yeah, they have a lot of great books in Schoolhouse Press. It was somebody who did like academic research on Selbu mittens wrote this book. So it has the proper, um, I can't remember what this is called going down the side. Stolpe, I think it's called. On both sides, it has the same thing, it goes all the way. And then it's got a palm pattern and a back pattern. And again, the lace, and Patricia is the best. And she taught in the class how the lace has to, middle of the lace has to line up with the middle of the mitten. And it's great, like she teaches you how to do your increases so that that, that will happen and how to do your math. Um, and obviously I will not divulge her secrets because she's a great teacher and you should take the class. <laughs> um, she also has classes on how to make like socks and beautiful cardigan jumper things. Speaking of, I'm wearing um, today the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. This is one of the most popular patterns on Ravelry, at least since it was published in, I think they published this in like spring or summer of 2019. I've made it, um, let's see, I've made this one. I made a purple one for my cousin. I made a baby one for, was like a, for Gemma, who's now four. It probably still fits her, it was huge. My friend Marianne's four-year-old Gemma, two years ago when she was just like not even two yet. I made another baby one for my like best cohort mate friend Flannery's little baby who was born last October. Oh my gosh, she looks so cute in it. Um, I made one for my friend Catherine. I made one for my friend Priscilla. Okay, that's a lot. I made like at least six. Yeah, six. Love notes include two like baby ones, but yeah, it's an addicting pattern. I've also made the ranunculus pattern um, using the love note shape. Um, I really like knitting with uh, fingering singles, which is what this is. 
and mohair because it's a great way to prevent the singles from pilling and um, getting like really stretched out of shape. So I knit a lot with wool and mohair together. And this has the little bleeding hearts pattern. Um, kind of looks like a skeleton also, which I kind of love. I'm not really like into goth stuff, but I do love the love note um, pattern. And it is really soft and comfortable to wear. Mohair and, um, and fingering singles held together is like, yeah, it's amazing. It's, if you haven't tried it, you should. Um, you can even use mohair and color work. I haven't really tried it yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. Um, anyway, yeah, I dye a lot of mohair and um, fingering singles together for for friends to do kits. Uh, my friend, oh no, I made another love note. I made one for Zoe. So I made seven love notes um, and more, more to come, at least two more like within the next year because they're really fun and they look really good on a variety of people. Usually it's like kind of cropped. You can make it longer and then it has like three quarter sleeves, balloon sleeves. You don't do any decreases until you get to the very end, but it's just like really flattering. I don't know. I love it. I love it. It looks good if you like marl two colors together. Yeah. I'm going to do another video on wool and mohair at some point. Yeah. Cause I made, I've made a lot of stuff with mohair. Anyway, this is my selbu, my two selbu mittens that I've made. Um, and I was thinking about selbu because yesterday I'm recording this on the 14th of September, which is my dad's birthday. He's 60 today. Um, he doesn't watch this. He'd probably be entertained if he watched this. He's a, he's really funny. My, both my parents are, um, English professors. So they're, they're, they're fun. They're very committed educators. Um, yeah, this book, Selbu Patterns. This just got released in English. I got it from the Woolly Thistle. Um, the Woolly Thistle is really close to me, like geographically. Um, it's like an hour and a half down the road. So I almost get, I will always get my packages like within the next day or two or business day or two, which is the best. Also, they're just like the best. Um, I've been guest blogging for the Woolly Thistle recently and um, like working with them a little bit and they're awesome people. They have the best um, like shop cast. The people who work there are really nice. They're really helpful. There's like lots of people that are getting included in there who work there in their shop cast now and showing their projects and giving tutorials and they have a bunch of YouTube tutorials. Um, they're so great. So Selbu patterns I got from the Woolly Thistle. Um, and this is just like, it's kind of a continuation of Selbu mittens because there are so many things that they didn't include in the original um, book because there's especially, um, I think they're called endless patterns, which it's like a pattern for an all over jumper. Um, you wouldn't, you could put that on a mitten, but oftentimes the motifs are too big for a mitten. So I'm not gonna show, I'm trying not to show motifs, but like this guy, like that's a beautiful cardigan jump, uh, like boxy. And it tells you information, like this is from the 1940s. It's a short cardigan knitted with hand spun. There's some socks in the same, with the same, type of motif. There's a lot of pictures of socks in here. Um, beautiful socks and like vertical patterns that go on socks. Um, and so they'll, it's same as Selbu Mittens, they'll give you these pictures and then on the facing page will be the charts for the, um, that go with those. So this woman has done so much research. She's basically gone to the Selbu Museum and, um, and collected a ton of knitwear and used private collections and everything. And then just basically charted everything she finds. And this is, as she says, these patterns are public domain. Like, um, so it's, it's a, you know, it's a beautiful, um, collection for designers. Um, I almost always just use these books for knitting stuff for me, just because it's fun. But if you're a designer, I mean, if you've never, understood how designers operate. This is how they operate. They have stitch pattern books and they have chart books and a whole bunch of stuff. And they just put new spins on things and create their own patterns. That's how you learn how to design. There's some jackets. Oh, just so gorgeous. A lot of it is just in um, black and white or gray and white. Um, there's some reds in here. 
Sometimes they'll show you the pattern white on a black background. More often it's black on a white background. Um, and then there's things like this, like this is how, how patterns are laid out, different ways patterns are laid out, which is really cool. And one of the things that this book has in the, in the beginning is, um, well, there's a history, which is great. Uh, different types of um, shaping for sleeves, some historical garments, and then a great section, basic patterns um, for uh, two types of jackets, one with shaping, one straight, uh, some socks, hats, baby hats. Um, it's like awesome. So for instance, women's sweaters, fitted women's cardigan and short jacket. So these are by Venka, I don't know, Venka? I don't know how to speak Norwegian, rolled, or rolled. Um, and she was the editor of, and writer of Norwegian Knitting Designs 90 years later. Um, so if you love the patterns, and if you don't have this, you should get it. Trafalgar Square publishes all of these books. Um, so this, for instance, this is just the cover page. There's that jacket. That's the basic women's jacket. Um, and she's got patterns for this here. Um, but basically, if, especially if you have both of these books, but even if you just have this one, because it's got your basic recipe in it, you can make this jacket. Let's see if I find a bigger one. I mean, these, these um, books are amazing because there's also a lot of history in them. So for instance, this one, this one's amazing. The most elegant sweater. So there's this, like this is an endless pattern, an example of an endless pattern, because it does not in bands like a lot of Fair Isle pieces are, in, not all, some Fair Isle things are like all over Fair Isle pieces. Um, actually that's confusing because all over Fair Isle could mean it's all color work and it's in bands, or it could mean it's an endless pattern. Um, but so Farrell does do the endless patterns as well. Um, whereas here I'll show this is an example of a banded piece. That's a banded design, so it's in horizontal bands. You could also have vertical bands in Shetland or Norwegian knit, style knitting, selbu style. I don't think this is all specifically selbu though. I think generally this is Norwegian. So this is the, the one of the jackets, basic jacket. I love this color combination too. It's like a navy and white. Um, and so using this book or selbu patterns, you can knit yourself a jacket or a jumper or any type of sweater you want. Um, you're going to have to do some math if you want to use any pattern in this because, um, you're going to want it to be like symmetrical on each panel or front and back. Um, but you know, all you really need is your chest measurement and to do a gauge swatch and then you can kind of go for it. Oh, here's another example. This is the Wooly Thistles. They send postcards often with your order. Um, this is the Star Cardi. This one's um, a little more involved than the Sobu um, or pattern jumper or the Norwegian knitting designs jumper because it's got a bunch more steaks. So normally in the Norwegian knitting one, um, they have a very innovative um, design where they don't, um, the, it's like a set in sleeve, but it's connected as you would do it in a bottom up like yoke sweater. So you're not doing any steaks at the sleeves, but you're still shaping the sleeve caps. And it's, um, I've done that method top down as well for um, like an Isabel Kramer uh, patterns. Uh, one is called Aldous. I've done the Aldous pattern three times. And it has uh, the same type of, like, it looks like a set-in sleeve and you use a pearl ridge to um, to show the, the fake seam and to separate the sleeve from the body. Um, but you, it's top down and you first you do a bunch of increases on the body and then you gradually do it on the sleeves and it looks like the sleeves are shaped with short rows, but they're not, which is awesome. Um, so it's like an amazing, uh, very innovative way to do, um, to do a, traditional type of color work sweater without any steaks uh, or just the front steak, which is much uh, more manageable than sleeve steaks, especially because you're not shoving your arms into it <laughs> or your neck. Um, yeah, I guess you might have a neck steak too, but that's fine. 
Um, if you can do a sleep steak, you can do a neck steak. That's the, or not a sleep, a uh, front steak. It's the same thing. You're just putting more stitches on hold and then doing the steak again, <laughs> the same exact place. Um, and I'm just going to show some quickly some other books so you can get Nordic Knits, also available from the Lily Thistle, um, or anywhere that you get your knitting books. Um, this is great. It's, I think his name is Birger Berg. Anyway, another example of a really beautiful kind of classic Norwegian um, sweater. This one's got raglan shaping though. You can see this one has, instead of the cool innovative set, set in sleeve method that Ben Carroll does, or Wencha, I don't know how to say her name. Um, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, this got, this got raglan shaping. Um, and a lot of his patterns have raglan shaping, like even in like hat crowns and stuff, um, that kind of style, which is really cool. Um, and there's lots of beautiful kind of somewhat modern, somewhat, so there's the, that one, um, flatten cardigan. There's ones that are more like yoke sweaters. Um, again, that's got raglan shaping, so it doesn't look like a Shetland yoke because Shetland, sometimes you shape a Shetland um, yoke with raglan shaping before and after the, or mostly just before the um, actually like yoke patterning starts, but then you're gonna shape that with um, circular decreases, usually around certain points within the pattern. It's kind of built in. Um, and then you've got like, more all over color work type sweaters. There's also like, I even I just have more books on Scandinavian, Norwegian, Faroese, etc. knitting, um, but I don't have time to show you all of them. And these are just my favorite ones. This one, I love this. I'm totally gonna make that using um, Shetland wool because there's, yeah. There's a lot about, uh, about color theory um, and how you would put a sweater like that together and the, how you would make a palette for it. Ah, I don't want to show the directions. There you go. Um, it's on the cover too. On the edge there. So something like that. It's got four, well, five colors, including the, yeah, including the grayish. Um, but that's something that I would um, put together a Shetland palette um, to knit with Shetland wool. Um, yeah, and there's also in this one, there's other, I mean, there's sweaters and stuff, but then there's like some other ones. There's the really, um, a really like famous mittens that this um, person designed that have star mittens. So you got a huge Selbu star, but it's so big that you have to spread it over both mittens. So at some point I'll knit those that have star mittens. There's men's and women's versions of all of these mittens, um, or just, Big hands, small hands, you could say. Some people have big hands and some people have small hands who identify in all sorts of ways. Who cares? There's cable hat, that's pretty. That's gorgeous. Occasionally I make cable hats. I actually have a cable hat on my needles right now um, and some DK yarn that I dyed. I don't knit on it very often, but like they don't take that long, so I should just finish it. I was gonna finish it for my dad for his birthday, which is today, but I knit him a different hat instead. <laughs> he he just kind of like, I, I offered to make him whatever he wanted. This was a couple months ago. And he looked at my Ravelry and he was like, oh, I like that one. And I was like, okay. And I just went downstairs and got it. And it's a green and, um, and silver kind of Fair Isle Norwegian style hat. Um, I think I use Norwegian charts, but it's, it's a traditional Fair Isle cap with the star crown. Um, yeah, I like to do, when I just knit hats, I like to do variations. Um, like I'll take um, the patterns by Wilma Malcolmson, like the Katie's cap and DeCropter's cap and take kind of the basic star shape and then kind of fill it in differently or um, around the edges. And you can just knit it as it is. It's incredibly beautiful. And um, Shetland Will Week generously offers those patterns for free. Um, but yeah, so I love to knit variations on those patterns. 
using the basic stitch counts and um, numbers of rows. And so that was one of them. And it turned out that that hat was a little bit bigger, uh, a little big for me anyway. Um, and so I was like, great, easy. <laughs> Speaking of beautiful hats in green and silver, I would love to knit some of these hats. Um, and I think it would be possible to kind of use this book in conjunction with um, with Selbu patterns um, because these are technically endless patterns in here and you just have to follow certain lines to create the crown um, you, know, you know properly and follow the stitch counts the top star that's so pretty he does a lot of um, great variations like he'll take a pattern like this one and he's got the sweater on the cover and there's the jumper version the you know cardigan and the and the pullover and then the hat there's the hat ah. <laughs> And also, like, there's, like, the bottle cozy. <laughs> it's so cute. There's a, you know, like a tie, I think, back here. There's the tie. It's, like, very cute. Anyway, there's one more book that I brought. This one is Nina Grandland Sather Knits from Around Norway. So she's got socks from around Norway and mittens from around Norway. Mittens from around Norway came out right at the height of my obsession with Selbu or with them. Um, color work generally, color work mittens, in my first year of graduate school when Monica and I were, were keeping each other sane, knitting with each other a lot. Um, very special relationship based on both moving to Philadelphia as sad graduate students and becoming best friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we were both like, it was a tough time, but we had each other and we had knitting. And we made really beautiful things and I will always look back on it as a time of amazing personal growth and one of the best friendships I think I will ever have. Um, sorry, that was kind of sappy. I hope you're watching this, Monica. I love you so much. <laughs> I'll have to send her the link when I publish this, just in case. No, I trust her. I actually bought this at a bookstore, North Shore Bookstore in Manchester, Vermont, where my, oh my gosh, my other best friend, well, I have like maybe five best friends from like actual from graduate school um from Penn and one of my one of them she's not in my department her name is Lila I hope you're watching this too Lila we're gonna have to have words if you don't Lila and I she, her parents have a house down in Manchester and um and we met up there Manchester Vermont uh recently we hadn't seen each other in a long time and um well I made a I made a point to go down to Philadelphia and up to Philadelphia and see her when I was in DC but um but I hadn't seen her in a while, especially for, you know, COVID is, you don't see a lot of people. And so we went to this bookstore and they actually had this book like in person and I didn't have to order it from Amazon because the Woolly Thistle doesn't have this one yet. <laughs> Maybe they will. Um, but this, so mittens from around Norway and socks from around Norway, um, like include patterns sort of similar to this, but this one's also got like, look at that beautiful shawl. I don't knit very many shawls, um, but this one I would because it's, um, well, it's got a crocheted edge and I can't use a crochet hook, but it's garter stitch. So I really don't like to knit stocking it back and forth because I don't like purling very much. Um, but yeah, I'll do, I'll do a garter shawl. I am working on a shawl right now. I've been working on it for a long time though. It's called Sunshine on the Path by Patricia Fortune. And it's very cute. I haven't even made it to the lace though. There's some cute mittens. Oh, I like that they did it reverse, the reverse colors. This is gonna be a long video. I mean, for me, it's funny how I think of this as really long when a lot of podcasters go on for like much longer than this. It's just that it, well, now I have good Wi-Fi, but it used to be in the house in DC when we had the satellite Wi-Fi that it just took forever to upload the longer the <laughs> video was. So especially in HD from my phone. Oh my gosh, it just took um, I would like go do it at Starbucks. Actually, no, I don't think Starbucks support supports that. I never did it from Starbucks, but sometimes I would like, do it from other people's Wi-Fi's. Like I would stand outside their house or after we got vaccinated, we could go inside. Um, this is really cute. I'm just rambling and I'm talking like low, like quietly and fast. So sorry if you just didn't hear any of that, but it wasn't worth it. It was just me talking about slow Wi-Fi. Um, this is cute. There's just like little, I don't want to show that. There's this one and a variation on it is this one. Really cute. 
So this is a great book. There's lots of traditional types of knitting in here. It's just like a different designer and I really like, and oh, and she'll tell you where it comes from. This one's like Vestland, cropped Vestland cardigan. And she does that in all of her books. Um, so it's truly around Norway. It's not like Selva style exclusively. Um, although in mittens from around Norway, there's definitely some Selbu style mittens and those ones are gorgeous. Um, but there's lots of beautiful things in here. Um, and there's also like, you can find yarn support and, um, like, you know, where to get certain things. This is gorgeous. So the stall kind of a traditional, I've always wanted to make one like this with the lice. Although I really want to make the Marius one with the, just go straight across the top. Although that one's not super hard. Um, you don't really need a pattern for that. You just kind of, I mean, you need chart books, but you don't need a, a, a like a really specific pattern because it's it's like a fair isle um, jumper. You just kind of knit your tubes or you knit your, your body tube. And when it's up to your armpits, you cast on some steaks. And I think in the Marius, that's kind of where you start the main color work section and you're doing the color work with the steaks. And then, um, you know, you do your neck steak and you make the collar, um, you shape the collar, um, secure sleeve steaks with the felting needle. This is how I would do it. I'm talking myself through it. Um, graft the shoulders together and then you can just knit the sleeves kind of either plain or with the lice patterning. Um, so yeah, I could do that one without a pattern, but you got, yeah, if you know, if you know Fair Isle, you can totally knit something like that without, um, without a pattern or with a simple Fair Isle pullover pattern or something, if you're getting the same gauge. So anyway, yeah, there's my Selbu, my Selbu mittens. There's two. I, I do have pairs for both of these, although none of the mittens have thumbs. I am famous for procrastinating on knitting thumbs. Like I've always been this way when I, and I've been making mittens for like five years, um, maybe four years. I don't know. Yeah, maybe four years, a long time. So don't be like me, knit your thumbs. I just consider it done. And then like when I finally realize I have to give it to somebody, I'm like, oh, I better make those thumbs and block them. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's just kind of how, how it goes. I just wait until the last possible minute. That's my procrastinating. I don't like some people procrastinate on certain like finishing. I never, it takes me forever to sew on buttons, which is not like a hard thing. It's like until I want to wear that sweater, I'm not sewing on the buttons. Even if it has buttonholes and everything, I'm like, no way. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll procrastinate um, on that kind of finishing. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Um, thanks for sticking with me <laughs> for 33 minutes of me talking about Selbu books and only showing you two Selbu mittens. <laughs> um, but I love, I love Norwegian knitting books. Um, I love all knitting books, but these are like the books that I wanted to have when I was first doing those mittens in my first year of grad school with Monica. This is the book we wanted and we, it wasn't, it, maybe it existed, but it wasn't English. And we were fiends. We found patterns, like we just found charts everywhere. Um, and we made our own patterns and we knit so many free patterns from Ravelry. There's a bunch of beautiful free patterns on Ravelry for mittens. Um, and oh my gosh, they were so detailed. I almost, I mean, I knit Fair Isle now, but um, not with yarn like that, like that beautiful hand dyed. We used so much Malabrigo, um, Makita. Malabrigo Makita was our favorite. Um, and I could even remember all the colors like Wales Road. Oh my gosh, that was such a good one. I had, um, this is like a teal and purple and blue. I had the one called Sabaduro, which was like a mid kind of pinks and purples. Cerveza or Cerveza was the most beautiful red. Oh my gosh. I had Cerveza, Cerveza. I had one in, in Malbriga Rios, which is the worsted spun, like four ply um, superwash worsted yarn. It's kind of like worsted DK. And I made a pair of mittens with that and white and blue. They were red, white, and blue. Um, they were super nice. They were from Folk Mittens, the pattern. Um, but yeah, Impressionist Sky, that was like this beautiful blue. Now I'm just rambling about yarn colors. Um, that's kind of when we we were like, we got to dye our own because it's way cheaper if we do that. And then we, that's when I dyed a bunch of fingering singles and um, I still have a lot of them. I'm using them in, in scrappy projects now. Um, 
which you'll see on my channel at some point. Um, but yeah, anyway, this has been me rambling about cell blue mittens now for 35 minutes and other projects. So yeah. Anyway, to all my friends <laughs> who I mentioned in this episode, I hope you watch this. <laughs> um, I'll send it to you so you can watch it and you can just, maybe I'll like timestamp it for when I talk about you and then you can just watch that part. <laughs> uh, anyway, this has been Tiny Destiny with Emma and thank you for watching again. Bye.